What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's Hour 2. Today I'm going to show you guys how to install a dishwasher step by step. Let's get straight into it guys, let's do this. Alright guys, so today we've got a dishwasher that needs to be installed. We've got here a Westinghouse, regardless of the brand that you buy, the process is going to be basically exactly the same. Minimal tools required, very very simple, DIY. This is the cavity here that it's going in, so it's a standard size cavity. What we need to do is look under the sink couple things that we need to look for because with the dishwasher there's going to be basically three main things that you need to connect number one is power so if we have a look down here right in the back we've got our power usually you'll find the power is actually behind the dishwasher location in this case here it's in the bottom of our sink number two we need to have the water outlet supply so coming out from the dishwasher all the dirty water needs to go back into your sink so what you need to look for is to see if you've got a little connection as we do here on the bottom of the trap to connect our dishwasher to. Now in this case here it's got some brown silicon or something over the top which means there used to be a dishwasher connected and at some point they decided to not use it anymore or new tenants moved in and they've actually sealed this one here up. So if you don't have a little connection for your dishwasher to connect to, um, what you have to do is just go out and buy a new trap with the dishwasher outlet on there as well. So that only costs you about three, four dollars to get a new trap. The third and final thing is our water supply. So if we have a look down here, we've got our separate water supply for our dishwasher, which is just basically clean cold water that feeds into the dishwasher. Once you've established all of those three, if you haven't got your water outlet, you might need to call a plumber um, or what you might be able to do, depending on your situation, is tee off your um, cold water supply going to your kitchen tap. So that's an option if you might be able to do it hands on. If not, you need to get a plumber out to um, install a separate one or connect off your existing cold water supply. Um, also with the electrical, same thing. If you haven't got an electrical point, you need an electrician to come out, depending on the country you live in, um, to install an electrical point. So anyway guys, we've got that out of the way. Where we're going to feed this one here through, usually most people tend to feed it directly through the side of the cavity. Um, so directly on the side, meaning it'll pop straight back out here. Usually at the back here, um, I don't like to put it through the bottom of the, um, of the cabinets. Reason for that is you have to feed it through the bottom and then back out underneath. And sometimes it's a little bit more harder to fish all your cables out and get all three supplies out from the same hole when you have to loop it from underneath. But we're going to make it work today. Let's open up our new Westinghouse dishwasher and I'll show you guys just how easy it is to install. Alright, so we've got our dishwasher all unpacked. What we're going to do is remove all these little twisty tie things on there. Um, and the reason why we removed that is just to allow us to have the maximum amount of slack um, on all these fittings. So I'll just quickly undo all of these. And now we've got everything running from the bottom. We're going to turn the dishwasher around and have the backside going through, making sure we've got enough space to be able to start feeding all the um, cables through. Now what you need to do is, because we've got the power, which is a little bit bigger on this side, um, so we want to make sure that we're getting these in from largest to smallest. So you can see here the little hose that connects to the outlet or down to the bottom of the trap. This one is probably the smallest, so we're going to leave this one here till last second last and first. This one here is a um, cutoff switch so it's a little safety feature. Because of the size of it we're going to get this one here in through first followed by the rest. Alright guys so the first one that we need to feed in is the one with the safety switch um, or the cutoff switch. Now most of the older dishwashers didn't actually have a cutoff switch so that means the old hole that's created here isn't designed to accommodate for it. So what we have to do in this case, you can use a larger hole saw size. This one here is actually pretty big as it is. So what I'm going to do instead is use a multi-tool. I cut a little section here out of the side and then right at the end of the job, I get a cover plate and I cover that exposed um, hole. Um, but multi-tool is easy way to get around this. So that's a multi-tool there using a standard blade on there, um, plunge cut, and we're just going to cut a little section here out. So I've got the bottom section here notched out. Um, what I'm going to do now is show you guys on the inside how it's actually cut and one of the benefits of using a multi-tool. So you can see here to get the multi-tool in, it's actually going to be very, very difficult to get it in on the right angle. But one of the best things about the multi-tool is you can adjust the angle. So if we turn this one here over, loosen off our blade, we can actually turn that over onto a right angle, lock it in place, and now we can actually cut on a side. So it's going to make things a lot easier 
I'm going to actually start cutting this one here. Hopefully you guys can see. And now we should be able to pull this little section here out. So once that's done, I've cut out a little notch here so that we can slide through our cable with the cutoff switch. Um, right at the end, I'll get a cover plate similar to the one that's over here, and that'll cover up that little hole that I've just created. So we're gonna have everything nice and tidy at the end. Um, let's start feeding through our cables. So we're gonna start off with this one here. Feed that one there through first, because that one there is the largest one. We'll go over to the other side now and pull that one there out by hand. A little bit hard to do with one hand, but we'll manage. All right, so we've got that one there. All right, so now we've got the first one, which is the largest one. Next one is gonna be our power supply. So same thing. That's why it's important to start with the larger ones first. Otherwise you end up running out of room. So just feed that one there through. Once you've got a hold of it, then you can pull that one there out as well. Might need my other hand for it. All right, so now we've got power and our water. One more to go. And then we can feed that one there through as well. And now we've got all three out. That is probably the hardest part of this job. Now we can start pulling on these and then pushing the dishwasher in slowly. So if we just hold on with one hand, start feeding the dishwasher through. Push it all the way back. Make sure you've got enough slack on all sides. So we'll take our water supply and connect that one there up first. It's basically got some threads on there and you just thread that one there on. Make sure that one's on nice and tight. We'll take our power supply, plug that one on. We don't want to switch it on just yet. So make sure that stays off. And now we can get our return. With our return, we have to remove this silicon first. So I'll show you guys a couple of tricks to remove the silicon. So to remove this old silicon that someone's put in here, I'll just quickly clean off the edges with my fingers. If we're lucky, I might be able to get a bit of a grip on this and pull it all out. If not, we've got a couple options. We can either push something straight into it and push that piece of silicon into the bottom of the trap. Then we can disconnect it and pull it all out. Or I'm gonna try and use some screws. Sometimes I get pretty lucky with the screws. Um, I'll try something with a bit more coarse of thread. So we'll try something here like this with a bit coarse thread. We'll feed that into it and try and pull it out. And what I mean by that is we'll simply thread this on into the middle. Once it bites on, I'll feed it all the way through as far as I can, and then I'll try and pull back on it with a pair of pliers. And we're gonna take our pliers, bite onto the end of our screw, and try and pull that all out. There's a little clamp like this one here, so that we can attach our return with all the dirty water to come out into the trap. So what we're gonna do, install that one straight over the top, push that over the, the fitting, Make sure it goes in all the way. And then we're gonna line up our clamp and tighten that one there on with a flathead screwdriver. Once that's on all nice and tight, that's what it ends up looking like. This part is just a bit of the old silicon. Um, so what we're gonna do now, you can see we've got a fair bit of slack in here. So I'm gonna pull out the dishwasher and start pulling back these cables until everything's um, pretty compact in here and we'll let the slack sit at the back of the dishwasher. So you can see now we've got most of that slack out of there. Anything else we can just feed it through. And then push the dishwasher in behind it. Make sure you turn on the water first. We can switch on the power. So now we're gonna let the unit go through a quick cycle. We're gonna watch and make sure that we've got no water leaks coming out so we can have a look down the bottom here make sure there's no leaking water at the same time we also want to check out 
So there we have it. We can hear the water all running through now. Quickly check, make sure there's no leaks coming through here. So towards the end of the cycle, which is in about 10, 15 minutes, it'll start pumping the water back out the return heading out into the trap so what we want to look for at that point is make sure that this is on nice and tight and there's no water leaks coming into the bottom of the cabinet and it's that simple guys nice and easy simple installation hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and i've helped you guys out as always like comment and subscribe until next time i'm bill thanks for watching bills out too